All right, Av Geeks, thank you for tuning in to another Flaps and Slots video. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe for more aviation content by clicking that subscribe button down below. I post new videos at least once a week. So a number of years ago, probably seven or eight, I made a video on how to make a model airport. In the years since I made that video, life happened and I had to take down my model airport and put my collection in storage. But earlier this year during quarantine, I decided to start a new project, which was building a new model airport. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made that model airport. It's a really long video, so feel free to skip around. And also, be sure to check the description below for links to the products that I used to build the model airport. So before I just jumped in willy-nilly to actually building the model airport, I took a step back and I said, you know, what do I want to build? What do I want to base this airport off of? And so two airports came to mind. One was Grand Cayman's airport, um, codenamed GCM. And then the other one was St. Kitts Airport, um, which has an identifier code SKB. And so what I did was I went over to Google Maps and I typed in those identifier codes and I was like, okay, here's the top down view of this airport. Um, here's kind of what I want my airport to look like. So I just got an idea of how the taxiways are set up, the runways are set up um, and all that good stuff. So a little bit of inspiration before I set about actually making my model airport. The other great thing you can do on Google Maps is you can measure distance. So just to make um, my airport scale, I would go over and I would measure um, the, the width of the runway, which at both airports is roughly 150 or 160 feet. Um, and so I translated that to one 400 scale, which is about, you know, a little, a little under five inches. So you can also use Google Maps to kind of get an idea of the dimensions of your airport, which is super helpful. And then so the next step from there was I went over and I have Pixelmator. Um, which is a cool app where you can draw stuff and edit stuff. And so I went over to Pixelmator and uh, I started playing around. I knew that the platform that I was working on top of had dimensions of eight and a half feet by three feet. Um, I just went over to Home Depot and grabbed some, some concrete board and a few two by fours and just screwed them together and then made this cool platform. Um, really simple, really easy to do. I'm not gonna include how to do that in the video. I think anyone can figure that out. But anyway, for all intents and purposes, my platform was eight and a half by three feet. And so I made a um, image that had pixel count translates to eight and a half by three feet. So 1700 by 600 pixels. Those are the same dimensions. And then I drew out um, what I wanted my airport to look like. And so, you know, drawing that out in a graphic design tool can really help you get a sense of or a visual sense of what your airport's going to look like. Um, and so... I just did that a few times and, and kind of nailed down what I wanted my taxiways to look like, where I wanted my runway, um, and really helpful for getting a sense of what I want to do before I actually dive in and start the project. So I got most of my modeling materials online from Woodland Scenics. Um, they've got a little bit of everything. They have this really cool road system and it's kind of like a plaster of Paris road. Um, they've got paving tape. They've got paint. You name it, they have it. I also got a few other materials from kind of local stores, so Joanne's Arts and Crafts. Got some tape and some paint brushes from there. Also went over to Home Depot and grabbed some painting tape. But I'll link all the you know cool stuff that you might not be able to find um, really easily in those types of stores down in the description below, so that when you finish watching this video and you go to set out and build your own model airport, you can easily find whatever you need. So the first step really is to map out you know where you're going to put everything. Um, so right here, as you can see in the video, I am mapping out the runway um, and, and you're just kind of tracing generally where you want everything to go. It doesn't have to be perfect, um, but I use some chalk, some pink chalk here, and you can use whatever color, obviously. Um, but I'm just marking a width of five inches there for the runway because that's about 150 or 160 feet, which is the, the width of the runway that we saw in Google Maps from um, St. Kitts Airport and from Grand Cayman's Airport. And so I'm just tracing out the runway and the taxiways um, and just to get a general sense of where everything's going to go. So now I've finished tracing everything out. And obviously you can see it's very similar to the, the draft that I made in Pixelmator earlier, um, where I sketched out what I wanted the airport to look like, you know, where I wanted to put my taxiways, my runways, etc., my parking stands, my terminals, whatever. And so I've just pretty much traced that onto the top of the airport. And so the thing that I'm looking for in this model airport is I want it to look three-dimensional. You know, if you go out there and you buy the Gemini Jets airport mat, or you go buy a no-point airport mat, you're going to get something two-dimensional. And so what I'm doing here in the first step is I'm building up some terrain underneath um, the runways, the taxiways, and underneath all the paved parts of the airport. And so what I did was I used a plaster of Paris mix. Um, I forget what the exact ratio is, but follow the instructions on whatever box of plaster of Paris you get. And I favored a more watery consistency. It just makes it easier to spread. 
Um, no matter if it's you know less watery or more watery, it's going to dry completely hard. So don't worry about it running anywhere. Um, but it just makes it a lot more easier to spread. So definitely maybe add a little bit more water in than it called for, but not too, too much more. I ended up going through about three cartons of plaster of Paris when I was building this. Um, and I actually only bought one to begin with. And then I realized very quickly early on that I needed two more. So I dropped everything and I drove over quickly to Joanne's Fabrics and got two more cartons of plaster of Paris. But make sure that doesn't happen to you. Plan ahead and try to anticipate exactly how much you'll need before you start your project. So as you can see here, I am spreading out that plaster of Paris mix over the runway and then using a ruler. You can use anything with a straight edge to smooth it out. You want to make sure that there are no air bubbles in it or anything and that it's as smooth as possible. Otherwise, you're going to have a pretty uneven layer of the runway or the taxiway or whatever that paved surface you're creating um, ends up being. So keep repeating that process. That is mixing up the plaster of Paris, pouring it out, smoothing it out over all the paved parts of the airport, and then... Um, you're going to have to go and wash out whatever materials you use. So um, I'm washing out the little bin that I'm putting the plaster of Paris in. I'm washing off the ruler, um, the trowel that I'm using to mix it between each um, different pour because otherwise that plaster of Paris will harden and congeal um, on those tools or inside the container that you use to mix it. So it's really important that it's clean and dry every time you go about making a new batch of it. So keep smoothing it out until the plaster of Paris is really smooth and even. One other point that I should make here is that make sure this base layer that we're building right now is wider than whatever we're going to put on top of it. So one thing that I should note here, um, super important that I found when working with Plaster Paris, is that you want to make sure that the mix has a really uniform consistency. If you don't beat it up a lot, if you don't stir it up a lot, you're going to get little crumbs of Plaster Paris in there, and that is exactly what you don't want to have. Um, and if you don't mix it really well, you also might find yourself... Um, stuck with some air bubbles later on once it dries and, and again that is not ideal so just make sure that you beat it up that you stir it really well you could even try using a whisk if you want if that works well for you so I'm just going to go ahead and let the footage roll from here for a little bit um, there are several points in this very long video where I'm not going to be speaking or not going to be commentating over the footage but I still think it's really important that you see what I'm doing and, ex and seeing exactly um, the process of, of mixing the plaster or doing whatever it is that I'm doing um, so feel free to play your own music. All right, so I'm back here to chime in with one more thing. Um, I'm mostly done doing the runways, you can see, and smoothing it out with the plaster of Paris. One other thing I'll add here is that intermittently I like to take out the vacuum and to suck up, um, suck away any dust that's on there. For instance, there was some spilled plaster of Paris that was on the table, and so I vacuum that up. It's really important that you make sure that nothing comes into contact with that plaster of Paris as it's drying. So just make sure to keep a clean workstation. Okay, so once you plaster of Paris the entire area that you plan to have paved at your model airport, you're going to want to go ahead and let that plaster of Paris sit and dry overnight for 24 hours before you start working with it again or working on top of it again. Okay, so we've just finished building this initial layer with the plaster of Paris underneath all of the paved surfaces that we're going to have at the airport. The next step is to actually put down those paved surfaces. So now we're going to be actually making the runways, the taxiways, and all the other tarmac covered areas. 
So the, the apron and the terminal areas, etc. So what we're going to do is we're going to get out paving tape from Woodland Scenics and apply a strip of tape around um, the perimeter of what we're going to be paving. And so that's really straightforward, simple, easy. Um, what we're going to do is just peel off that one side of, of the tape and then adhere the tape to the perimeter of whatever it is that we're going to be paving. So I'm going to start off here with the runway and then we'll go from there. So when you're doing this, it's really important to make sure that that paving tape is as straight as you can get it. Otherwise, you might see a bend or a curve in your runway. So just make sure that it's as straight as you can get it. Pull it taut and then press it down and adhere it on top of the plaster Paris surface that we've now let dry for over 24 hours. One other really important comment that I'll add here is to make sure that any dust that's on top of the plaster of Paris um, surface that we just made is vacuumed away. Otherwise, that tape is not going to really maintain its adhesive and it won't stick down to the surfaces. So it's really important to make sure that you're working on top of a clean surface. So again, this is another great opportunity to take out your vacuum and suck away any dust or debris that might be interfering with the stickiness of the tape and its ability to adhere um, to the surface. Applying this tape, in my opinion, is by far and away one of the most important processes um, during the building of this model airport. Make sure that that tape is as straight as possible, as I said earlier. Otherwise, you're going to end up with runways um, that are just not straight and they're not going to look realistic. So definitely take your time and make sure um, that your work here is, is top-notch, top-quality work. So the next step here is after you've applied um, the paving tape to whatever area you're going to now pave with the Woodland Scenic Smooth It, which I mentioned earlier is very similar to Plaster of Paris. Um, it has kind of the same type of consistency and mold. Um, you're going to want to put that painting tape down and then uh, that's going to hopefully prevent any spillover from the runway or whatever surface you're paving. Okay, so once you've marked off the edges of whatever area you're going to be paving with that paving tape and then um, after you put the painting tape over it, we're going to go ahead and mix up the Smooth It. It's pretty much the same as Plaster of Paris. I think it has the same exact consistency. It looks very similar. It's a little bit darker in color, um, but it does have the same ratio of mix to water. So it's really similar. I'm not going to talk too much about it, but we're going to follow the same simple concept, which is we're going to mix it up, make sure that it's mixed really, really, really well. I want to really emphasize that you're mixing this really well because this is the top layer of your tarmac, and this is what you're going to see. Um, so you don't want any air bubbles or air park pockets or uh, anything there. So mix it up really well, and then we're going to put it in between the two layers of, of paving tape and um, spread it out with a straight edge tool again. Make sure that this time you're even more careful and attentive to making sure that that layer is straight and, and um, really even because you don't want any bumps on top of the runway. So the Plaster of Paris and the Smooth It roadway system mix that I'm using here in the video, as you can see, they, they set very quickly. Um, so you don't have much time to work with them after you pour them out. So what I'm doing is I'm pouring them out and then immediately I'm taking out my straight edge tool, whatever it is, a ruler, um, the plastic straight edge that they include, uh, whatever it is, and smoothing it immediately. Otherwise, if you wait too long or you keep going back and making changes too long after you've poured it, um, it's not going to be responsive. It's going to already have taken and hardened in its form. So shortly after you've finished smoothing out your surface, you're going to want to go back and take off the tape around the edges. If you wait overnight and let the um, smooth it cure overnight, and you go back and do it the next morning, for example, and then you take off that tape, you might actually crack the surface, and that's the last thing you want. So make sure to take off the tape around the edges when the smooth it is still wet. So hands down, one of my favorite parts of building this model airport was peeling the tape away from the edges. It's so rewarding to see how straight and how perfect um, that layer is, and it's just awesome. So I absolutely loved it. So continue repeating the same process for all the different areas of the airport that you want paved. Um, so keep putting down that paving tape and the painting tape over it, mixing up your smooth it and then pouring it out and smoothing it out. Keep repeating that process until all is said and done and you've covered all the different paved surfaces of your airport. So here we are at another part of the video when I stop commentating and stop telling you what I'm doing and just let you see for yourself um, the process. So without further ado, press play on your music or whatever it is and keep watching.
I'll just jump back in here for a second and say that it's really important that any overflow or, or spillage um, that's outside of the area that you intended to pave, it's really important to get that up quickly before it dries, before it sets. So what I did is I just took the sharp edge of the ruler and kind of got it underneath it and, and just stripped it up. Okay, so at this point, I've scraped up a lot of um, that smooth at top coat layer that was drying in places I didn't want it to be. Um, some of that overflow that I said earlier is very important to get up right after you put it down. Um, so at this point, most of it's hardened and congealed. Um, and now all that's left to do is to go back and vacuum it up off the top of the surface. And so here's a look at what we've done so far. As you can see, there are actually two layers. So there's that first layer that we made just to build up some, some height underneath the runways and the other paved areas. Um, that was the first plaster of Paris coat that we did early on. And that's pretty rough and messy. There's no really defined edges to that. It's kind of all over the place, just underneath. Um, and then as you can see, there's also that second layer. And that's the layer that we're gonna be painting. That's the actual runway. Those are the paved surfaces. So the runway, the taxiway, and then right there, kind of the ramp area. So back to the painter's tape, our next step here is to actually paint the top of the model airport um, and all the runways, taxiways, and, and paved surfaces. Um, so what we're gonna do is just gonna mark off all those areas with the painter's tape. So at this point, now that we've masked off the areas to be painted, uh, it's really exciting because we can kind of see the airport coming into its own. Now we can really see um, what everything is clearly defined, whereas before it was, it was kind of hard to tell what everything was. Uh, but now we clearly see it. There's a runway, there's some taxiways, and then there's the apron, apron area as well. So it's kind of exciting. Um, we're really kind of getting to make some serious headway here and starting to make this thing look like an actual model airport. So before we actually dive into the painting, um, we got to do one thing first, and that is sand the top of the model airport. So I did two rounds of sanding. The first round, I used a coarser grit, relatively, 
um, about 100 or so. And then I went back again and went over the top of everything again with a much finer grit. So anywhere in the 200 to kind of 320 ballpark will work for you. Um, that's really important to make sure that there are no kind of hills or ridges or, or bumps along the top of the um, paved surfaces. So one word of caution or advice here, I guess, is do not underestimate the sanding process. It is a very, very, very important part of the process and you want to make sure to spend um, plenty of time doing it and doing it right because it's really important to have a smooth um, finish to that top coat that you're going to paint. So now after you've finished with the sanding, we can go ahead and move on to actually painting the top of the airport. Um, I did several rounds of painting. I, I didn't like some of the colors. I thought they weren't very accurate or representative of what um, kind of real concrete looks like at a real airport. Um, so I did a few different paint jobs, but the good news is you can always go back and paint over the layer that you just did. Um, so feel free to make mistakes on this part. Uh, as I said, I did paint the top a few times in different colors, but I ended up um, settling with this kind of cool slate gray color to imitate the concrete. Um, and I did that by blending two different color paints from Woodland Scenics. So I blended a kind of concrete colored top coat with a darker black and made this kind of cool slate gray color that I thought was really accurate. So another word of caution here is to make sure that you get enough um, paint to cover every surface that you're going to need it on. So when I was doing this, I mixed up my paint and then I realized that I needed more paint to finish and paint the rest of the runway. And I was like, okay, well, that's going to be really difficult because I'm now going to have to mix those two different colors again and get the exact same color. So I need the perfect ratio to replicate the paint that I already have down on the runway and finding that was nearly impossible. So I had to end up going back and making a new batch with more paint and then painting over the entire surface again. So make sure that um, in order to kind of keep those colors uniform, uh, that you mix enough paint to cover everything that you're gonna need it to cover. So now that I've finished painting, I'm going to go ahead and remove the tape uh, from the sides. And then after that, I'm going to go ahead and start with making some uh, markings on top of the surfaces. So I'll start with the runway and using a pencil. So graphite, I'm just lightly making markings to imitate um, kind of tire marks on the runway. And then I'm going to use my finger to smudge that graphite to make it look even more realistic. Definitely feel free to get creative with these markings. Um, I did near the terminal uh, a few um, different blotches here and there to kind of imitate fuel spills or, or oil leaks or hydraulic fluid leaks, whatever you want to imitate. Um, but it ended up looking really good and I'm really happy with the end result. So the only marking that I did was just to smudge the graphite to imitate tire markings. I didn't actually paint any lines or striping or gate markings or really anything in this video because I couldn't find a paint that worked well. I'm sure they're out there and I'm gonna continue looking for yellow, red, and white paints to make those line markings. And if you would prefer not to use paint, I'm sure you can find um, decals or print out decals on adhesive printer paper and then just stick them onto the top of the paved areas. So the next step is going to be to do some landscaping and add grass to the airports and those open spaces. So I took some green liquid pigment that I purchased from Woodland Scenics and then combined it with some regular brown paint to make a greenish brown underlayer. I'll mention this again, that all the products that I used are down in the description below with their links. And if I forget to add something or put something down there, just leave a comment on the video and I'll be sure to reply with an answer.
So a big mistake that you see here in the video, and this is really the benefit to doing a voiceover after the fact, after I've already done the project, is you can see that I left a little bit of white space between the runway and the actual area that I'm painting. And I had to go back actually and redo that and get those edges later on. Um, otherwise they're really hard to cover and you can kind of just see this blank white space there. It doesn't look realistic, obviously. Um, so make sure you get right up to the edge of the actual tarmac. So after I painted that area with that kind of greenish brown underlayer, I went back with my um, glue spray gun and I sprayed the area with glue. And what that's going to do is that's going to make sure that anything that I put on top of it, so whatever turf or sand or whatever I put down, um, is going to stay attached instead of just kind of being free um, to blow around the airport. So this first layer that goes on top is this nice, fine, green, um, finely graded kind of turf. Um, so I sprinkled that out and I left a few patches here or there where you could still see that kind of greenish brown underlayer because I want some variation in the actual terrain itself and the color of the terrain. So again, first step is put down that turf and then I opened up a more coarse um, kind of grassy turf to imitate small shrubs or whatever it is. Um, and so I put that down on top of that. And then once you put everything down, you're going to want to take out your glue spray again and spray everything just to make sure that, again, it's attached all together and it's not free to kind of move around um, the airport. I also purchased um, a little bit of gray, finely graded uh, ballast to add to the area in between the runway and the actual grass. If you really look carefully when you're at an airport, the, the runway never... Um, it's just right next to the grass. There's usually um, some kind of loose scrappy material or, or sand or whatever it is in between the two. Um, so I'm doing this just to kind of imitate what it would really look like in real life. So go around the edges um, of that grass where it meets the taxiway and just add in a little bit of loose gravel here or there. You can also sprinkle some of that loose gravel over the top uh, just to kind of give it, again, some variation in the color of the terrain. So I also use this powdery uh, light brown dirt that is sprinkled here and there on top of the grassy green area. And what that did is again, as with most of the other stuff that I'm adding, is it adds some variation to the color of the terrain. You know, there might be patches of dirt here or there at an airport um, in those grassy areas between uh, the different, you know, taxiways and whatnot. And so that's what I did here is I added that on top and I think that gave it a really nice look. So I'm gonna let these next five or six minutes play out without any commentary on my end so that you can really see uh, what I'm doing and, and what the process looks like.
So I also bought a few different packages of trees online. And because this is a 400 or one to 400 scale airport, um, I bought trees ranging from kind of one to two, two and a half inches. Um, you wouldn't want to get anything bigger than two and a half inches if you're modeling in one 400 scale. Of course, if you're making a, a larger scale airport, so one 200 scale, for example, you're going to want to get bigger trees to match um, your scale. But so what I did is, and I don't show this here in the video, but I just drilled little holes um, with a screwdriver in the actual board. And then I just plugged in those trees um, and added a little bit of glue to just cement them in place. So at this point, I'm pretty much done with building my model airport. Um, of course, as I mentioned earlier, I didn't get a chance to make any runway, taxiway, or apron markings with paint. I'm going to try to do that in a later video. Um, but your kind of last step is just getting out your gates, your, your terminals, your ground equipment, and then, of course, last but not least, your planes. And set those up as you like, and you're pretty much done. So here's a look at my finished model airport. I've still got to add all my markings and probably an ILS box by the runway, um, but all the hard stuff is, is mostly finished. I hope that you've enjoyed watching this video and that you've learned something from it. There are a lot of ways to go about building a model airport, but I think this one lets you be the most creative. Building your own terrain and designing everything yourself feels so much more rewarding than just buying an overpriced Gemini Jets mat. So I put a lot of time and money into buying these modeling materials, building the airport, and producing this video for you. So please like and subscribe to help support my channel. I'm always posting new aviation content that you'll certainly enjoy. Stay tuned for some more Model Airport videos coming soon. If you have any questions or comments, head down to the comments below and I'll be sure to get back to you. Thanks for watching.